In this video, we're moving on to the next step of building out your toolkit. That consistent sequence of nodes with consistent operators within that allows you to consistently achieve your best results when you're color grading. And this step could almost be thought of as a sort of extension or a part two of our first step when we talked about exposure, because today we are talking about contrast. And contrast and exposure are highly interactive, highly interrelated. They play off of one another to a large extent. However, I think it's helpful to your process to think of these as individual steps and to evaluate the best tool for each of these individual steps on an individual basis. So today we're going to focus on the contrast side of that coin. So let's dive in here to resolve and talk about contrast. So what do I have right now? I've got my overall color management set up. I've got a bit of a look in place here at my timeline level that is coming from my Voyager Essentials pack. And right now here in my clip level node graph, I just have one node. This is my exposure node that I built in part one of our series. And I'm going to turn my gain to the right on this node to expose the image up because that's the tool that I chose in part one of the series when we talked about linear gain. Linear gain is what I've chosen. Let me also turn this look back on here at the timeline level. And I'm just opening up this image. You can see I'm almost uh, opening it up a full stop, not quite because my gain is almost at a two. Now what I want to do is move forward and build a new node. This is going to be my ratio node. I call this ratio because I'm referring to contrast ratio and that name itself helps me keep my contrast manipulations anchored in the idea of the photographic. So thinking not just about twisting knobs and making the image look a certain way, but really trying to anchor what I'm doing and think about how I'm altering or collaborating with the photographed image to produce the ideal expression of it. So I'm thinking in some cases about the ratio between the key side of my subject's face and the fill side of my subject's face, or the ratio between the brightest pixels in my image and the darkest pixels in my image. Really thinking about that relationship and thinking about how I'm photographically manipulating it. And what I want to talk about now is several candidate functions or candidate operators that we could evaluate as our go-to, as our stock for what we do when we arrive at our ratio node inside of our template node graph. And the first one I want to talk about is the simplest one that I can think of, and that's simply to use our lift and gain. So let's go in here, and I'm going to drop my lift to the left, stretch my gain to the right, and you can see I am increasing my contrast when I do so, getting a little bit more pop out of the image in the process, right? Let's go ahead and grab a still of this. And what I want to do now is an experiment that we'll be doing throughout this series. I'm going to bypass all my color management. I'm going to turn my look off. I'm going to go back over here to the clip level of the node graph and go to my grayscale ramp. And I just want to see what I'm doing in the context of a grayscale ramp. So you can see that when I move my lift, I am either dropping or raising my deepest shadows or my shadows in general. And when I move my gain, I am dropping or raising my highlights. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. And as you can see, this is a pure linear operator. And it's entirely possible to hard clip pixels through the top and the bottom. Now, this is often exactly what you want when you're color grading, especially if you're in a color managed pipeline, which has lots of, lots of curve to it. And if you're working under a look like I encourage you to do, that's typically going to have some curve to it as well. Often what you want at this stage in your grade is to hit the image with some hard linear contrast. So lift and gain may be the simplest option, but it is not a bad option at all. And it's one that I would seriously consider when building out your uh, toolkit and deciding on what tool to use for your contrast adjustment. Let's talk about another candidate, another option that we can think about for manipulating our contrast. I'm going to reset my ratio node here, and I'm going to try out my contrast pivot. Let's look at the waveform. Before we even look at the image, let's just look at the waveform and see what we're getting here. So you can see a similar thing is happening. Happening. I'm getting darker in the bottom, deepening the shadows, and I'm stretching out my highlights, but this has an S-curve behavior to it. So I'm not hard clipping, but rather I'm compressing as I reach the bottom or the upper end of my image's dynamic range, okay? So that's another option that we could think about is contrast pivot instead of lift and gain. Another thing that I like about contrast pivot is that I can explicitly elect a pivot point, a mid-gray point to anchor around. So for example, here inside of DaVinci Wide Gamut Intermediate, if I wanted to anchor around the middle gray of this system, I could punch in a 0.336 into my pivot. Now, if you don't know that value off the top of your head, you can consult my mid-gray cheat sheet. That's a free download that I will leave in the uh, description for today's video, a link to it that is. And you can download that and keep it handy if you want to have it uh, so that you don't have to 
Remember numbers like 0.336 off the top of your head. But in this case, you can see I'm now anchoring around the mid-gray of my system, and I'm in essence getting what you could think of as neutral contrast. That's an upgrade. That's something that you can't get with lift and gain. With lift and gain, if you want to preserve your mid-gray or keep particular uh, pixels in the image from being pushed up or down, you just have to visually evaluate that and hope that you are not bumping things too much inadvertently. So that's a nice upgrade there, as is the S-curve, if that's what you want out of the image. But one more thing before we start to look at this in a uh, real-world sort of visual context, we can also still get that linear form of contrast out of our image by going into our project settings, going to our general options, and ticking this Use S-Curve for Contrast option off. And now I'm still going to get the same benefits of having a two-knob solution and having uh, a pivot knob where I can explicitly set my middle gray, but I'm also going to get that hard form of contrast that we were looking at a moment ago. So you can actually see if I now turn my color management back on and turn this ramp back off and turn my look back on and just reset my contrast pivot for now and try to kind of match to what we were doing with our lift and gain, I could actually get a one-to-one -one match to what we were doing with our lift and gain pretty quickly because I'm actually doing the exact same thing in this case. I'm just using a different set of knobs for it. So that's another candidate that you could consider. And it's going to give you similar results when you're in this use S-curve for contrast turned off mode, as you will get with your lift and gain, with the main benefit being that you can explicitly set a pivot point if that's what you want to do. Okay, so that's another option that you can think about. Now, here's another option that we can think about. And this one's kind of confusing because it's also called contrast pivot. It's a little odd to have two, of, uh, two sets of the exact same uh, knobs inside of Resolve, but that's the situation here. We've got a contrast pivot in our primaries. By the way, let's just go ahead and label our first still. We'll call it lift gain. I'm going to grab a still of the second one, and we could call it uh, CP for contrast pivot. And what I want to do now is reset this, and I'm going to go over to my HDR zones palette, and I'm going to take a look at my contrast and my pivot that I have in here. By the way, if you're on a control surface, once you're in the HDR zones palette, the contrast and pivot knobs are now going to drive the HDR zones contrast and pivot. Now, what's going on with this knob? Well, let's to get a sense of that, let's pull up a wipe here and just try to match our overall contrast level by adjusting things here in the knob. I'm going to go ahead and take another crack at that. Maybe I need to go a little bit deeper with my pivot, like so. And it's never going to get exact because it is a different operator. And we're going to talk about exactly how it's different in a moment, but probably somewhere around there is a decent start. Okay. Now, Let's assume for a second that I've gotten the contrast pretty close here. What do you notice that's different between these two images? If you can't tell visually, take a look at the vector scope. My signal mass is actually smaller in this version, isn't it? That's because the contrast pivot in the HDR zones palette is actually trying to do something fundamentally different. It is trying to preserve saturation as contrast is increased or decreased. And if you hadn't noticed before, when we did our contrast pivot, using our contrast and pivot in the primaries, we actually increased the size of our vector scope, didn't we? Or the size of our signal within the vector scope, I should say. That's a typical byproduct of operating directly on the RGB of our image, is that when we increase contrast, we get more saturation, and when we reduce contrast, we get less saturation, generally speaking. So one of the differentiators here in the HDR zones palette form of contrast pivot is that it's trying to zero that out. As you can see here, when I go off and on with this, my contrast is increasing, but my signal mass here in my vector scope is staying the same. So this is another option for you, and this is something you really want to think about in your color grading practice. When I'm turning my lift and my gain to the right, or when I'm, or when I'm turning my contrast to the right, for example, or I'm decreasing contrast using lift and gain, do I like the fact that that's typically accompanied by either an increase or a decrease in saturation? Many colorists do, many colorists are comfortable with, and they actually like that behavior. Or do you feel that that's something you're always having to fight? Like, good example would be if you are using lift and gain now, but you find that you often have to go in and turn the saturation knob to the left when you increase contrast, or when you decrease contrast, that you often have the impulse to go in and turn the saturation knob to the right. That could be a really good clue that maybe the ideal stock baseline contrast operator for you is actually the HDR zones contrast pivot. But those are three candidates for you to explore. 
Obviously, those are three of many candidates that you could think about in terms of how do I manipulate my contrast and my pivot. But for the sake of this series on building out your toolkit, I want to focus on the most fundamental, the simplest, the broadest, the most sound operators, because we're always going to have the option of doing more. We could go into our custom curves. We could go into the individual zones of our HDR zones palette. We could go into our log wheels. We could do any number of things to achieve more nuanced, uh, you know, like shot level uh, manipulations of the tonality of our image. But as a stock, as a go-to, we want to have a broad and consistent and uh, consistently sound way of introducing or extracting contrast from our image in a sort of global way. And th these three candidates that we explore today, I think are three really strong candidates for doing exactly that.